Countries in the West African Economic and Monetary Union are now experiencing the fastest growth in Africa, and this is a result of the change in public policies aimed at combining their strength with the private sector. This is according to Lionel Zinsu. He's the chairman and managing partner of Southbridge and the former prime minister of Benin. He discussed the growth prospects of the region and more with CNBC Africa's Christy Cole. I would say Francophone Africa is evolving, becoming a bit more business friendly, which was more a privilege of the English speaking part of, uh, of Africa. Because our tradition in French speaking Africa was more orientated uh, around the state, the, 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 the government, the, 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 the government uh, initiatives, uh, with less of a tradition of the private sector. Uh, being leading the growth and this has dramatically changed in favor of the private sector I would say in the last 10 years so one of the achievements is that the growth of the West African French speaking Union French and Portuguese speaking currency Union called Waimu uh, and you are in Togo in the country of this Union is nowadays the fastest in terms of growth in Africa. And this is, I think, uh, an effect of, of a change where the public policies aim at uh, combining strength with the private sector, which was less the case uh, in the past. Yes, I like that you put a time frame to it, saying specifically in the past 10 years, things are beginning to evolve economically. But I'd like you to take uh, several steps back, if I could term it as that. Let's look at what would you say were the major challenges or drawbacks for these economies across the Francophone Africa? I mean, we, we, we have some, some, some major uh, strengths, I, I think. We, we, we are reasonably well integrated. So the, 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 in terms of the in integration uh, of the economies, uh, trade, uh, moves of people, uh, commonality in terms of, uh, of the law, business law, corporate law. Um, we, we are a bit less than uh, our brothers of East Africa in the ECA, but decently uh, progressing uh, in this respect. We have a chance also, which is that we are diversified economies not totally related to raw materials. So in a country like Togo or mine, Benin, which is a neighboring uh, country, you, you, you have a, an economy which is based on agriculture and tertiary services, logistics, uh, financial services, uh, not enough of manufacturing, but we are not vulnerable and dependent upon raw materials. Uh, we are lucky enough for having not too much petrol, oil uh, production. Or, so it means we have a diversified economy. And today, the engine of growth, which you can see in, in Togo with a 5% growth, in Benin, 6%, like in Ghana, which is not French speaking, but is the other neighbor, uh, eight, more than 8%, same for Ivory Coast, 7.5, 8% growth, so very significant growth. All that is driven by both agriculture, urban development, tertiary services. And I think it's uh, healthier than to be driven by copper, diamond, uh, uh, oil or, or, or I gas. I was waiting for you to mention the oil, which sounds like <laughs> it's a trap now for countries who have that resource. Yeah, we, we have not that sort of uh, brutal uh, cycles. In terms of our drawbacks, I think we are not yet uh, business oriented uh, enough. Uh, we have discovered the private sector recently, uh, after the privatization of the, the last 20 years. But the truth is that it could be that we believed a bit more, a bit too much, and a bit too long uh, in uh, the role of the state, uh, the government, uh, when the jobs are created by. The, the, the little small firms as well as medium or large firms, but it is a private uh, creation. And uh, we, we start to acknowledge that and uh, to incentivize that. 
and incentivize entrepreneurship. But as of today, one of our drawbacks is that we do not create room enough for the youth to get proper qualified jobs. Um, and we need far more public-private dialogue, public-private contracts, public-private projects, or purely private projects. And the development financial institutions have discovered that even later than uh, our own governments, uh, but they start to finance the private sector. But we have a missing piece. The missing piece is when you are exiting the informal sector, exiting the very small scale, but you are not yet an established medium firm or big firm, and to get some financing there, we have a missing piece. Be it equity or debt, we have an immense effort uh, to do. And in this place, in Lomé, in Togo, speaking with the European Union, we say quite clearly, if the European Union wants to be efficient with our uh, private sector, which means efficient for our labor market and our sustainable and inclusive growth, you have to help us to develop equity instruments, to develop financing. We are the least financed continent. Everybody speaks of the sovereign debt. The problem is the private debt. We have not enough private credit and not enough private equity. And what we need is a good system of de-risking de the investment, a good, a good support to uh, young firms. They cannot have the system of guarantee uh, of an established firm. And that we have to subsidize if necessary. Now, you mentioned earlier of the ECA and the East Africa and your acknowledgement of the newly growing awareness of the private sector across Anglo Anglophone Africa brings to mind the, continent, the continental AFC, AFCFTA, so to speak. To what extent do you think that this agreement that's been signed by the 55 countries across Africa could help to boost more trade investment and private sector investment and activities in Anglophone Africa specifically? But uh, you know something, I, I, I do not believe that today we can make statements for Anglophone countries specifically. You see, uh, my country has 750 kilometers of borders with Nigeria. It's the same people, same tradition, same languages. This country, Togo, has 700 kilometers of borders with Ghana, which is Anglophone. Let's not speak in terms of Anglophone Africa or uh, French-speaking African or Portuguese-speaking countries. We are now in a process where we have to have free trade across the geography, whatever the language people speak. You have a common market in, uh, in, uh, in Europe but you have to speak Italian, Dutch, German, British, English, uh, French, uh, Portuguese, whatsoever, Serbo-Croat, whatsoever. They have created a unique common market and, and they have reached the proper scale. And that was Lionel Zinsu, he's the chairman and managing partner of Southbridge and the former prime minister of Benin.